Today we're getting into the latest Tesla news, including the Model Y's new award, Tesla's latest price increase strategy, Tesla's inventory problem, and more, so let's get into it. First up today, Tesla has won Kelly Blue Book's five-year cost-to-own award for premium EVs in 2023. The awards are given to vehicles with the lowest projected ownership cost over their first five years, and that's an important stat to track because a lot of people don't consider it when they're shopping for a car, especially new. The initial sticker price doesn't reflect what you're actually going to spend on the car in the long term. Many factors can impact a vehicle's cost to own, and while EVs will always have the advantage in maintenance costs and depreciation over ICE cars, other factors like a generally higher sticker price and slightly higher insurance premium keep them at around the same five-year cost. In the category of premium EVs though, the Model 3 and Y are winning. Luxury electric car was awarded to the Model 3 and luxury electric SUV was awarded to the Model Y. These aren't entirely surprising considering Tesla announced in their last impact report that the Model 3 has a comparable cost of ownership to a Toyota Corolla, which won KBB's five-year cost to own award in the hybrid vehicle segment. Toyota as a whole won KBB's five-year cost to own award for overall brand brand, so this is especially impressive. We could see this balance getting skewed here soon if Tesla continues to maintain competitive pricing. Also in the impact report, Tesla compared the Model 3 to what they consider its ICE equivalents to prove the Model 3 is the first EV to be priced comparably. The Audi A4, BMW 3 Series, and Mercedes C-Class are all over $40,000, whereas the Model 3 starts right around $40,000 before incentives. This is a recent development though, following a series of price cuts this year affecting their entire lineup. The Model Y is is also now more affordable than ever, starting right around $47,000 before incentives. That initial price goes a long way when factored into the long-term cost, and again, it's what most buyers are paying attention to. Among the other awards was the F-150 Lightning in the category of electric truck. That would mean it beat out the Rivian R1T and GMC Hummer EV, which isn't too surprising because the Lightning starts at $60,000, while the R1T starts at $73,000, and the Hummer EV starts at $84,650 and is basically unavailable. I'd expect all the other costs associated with these trucks to be about the same, but KBB doesn't offer a breakdown in this category. The award for the categories of electric car and electric SUV were won by the Chevy Bolt EV and Chevy Bolt EUV, though those cars are unfortunately in their final year of production. Once these cars are no longer available, affordable EV options will be even more limited, at least for the time being. For now, an EV hasn't penetrated the overall five-year cost to own award, but with the Model 3 catching up to the Corolla, I won't be surprised if we see them take over in the coming years. Next up today, Tesla's supercharger network in China has officially opened to non-Teslas. Tesla first started opening up their network in 2021 in Europe. From there, they gradually started expanding that open network. That was an easy process because Teslas in Europe are made with the European standard charge port, CCS2. Every EV in Europe already uses the same charging cable. This is not the case in the US, of course, because Tesla uses their proprietary charger. In China, though, the standard is GBT, so Tesla there already has separate charging ports. Tesla Tesla uses the Chinese standard connector there, so that should make the experience as seamless as it is in Europe. Tesla recently announced that this new pilot program will be in Beijing and Shanghai, and will include 10 supercharger stations that will be open to 37 different EV models. Tesla has over 1,600 supercharger stations and over 10,000 superchargers in China, so this program definitely has room to expand, but unlike the US, where fast charging outside of Tesla's network is spotty and unreliable, China already has a thriving EV fast charging industry. There are already around half a million fast charging stations in China in direct competition with Tesla's supercharger network. Of those it's unclear how many are open to all EVs, so this may still be an advantage for Tesla moving forward. As for Tesla's supercharger network in the US, Rate Your Charge has released a new report showing just how much more reliable Tesla's network is than any other charging network. Rate Your Charge conducts weekly reports, quote, from numerous fast charger check-ins from regular EV owners, with no affiliation with any particular network. EV owners rank their experience as good, bad, or fail. As you can see in this chart, Tesla's network was the only one with no failed check check-ins. In order to qualify for a good rating, the check-in has to consist of a successful charge, an accurate smartphone app, full charging speeds on first plug-in, and more than 50% of chargers on-site working at full speed. A bad check-in means users were still unable to charge their vehicles, but their experience was not up to those standards. That includes having to wait five or more minutes for a spot to open at a full station. Of 214 check-ins this week, only 19% were using the Tesla supercharger network, and 56% were using Electrify America. For Electrify America, nearly half of their check-ins involved a faulty or incorrect smartphone app, limited charging speed, a need to re-plug in, a call to customer support, 50% or more of the site being down or 
or limited, or a wait time of five minutes or longer. I would hope that a majority of these reports were just for wait times, but from my personal experience with Electrify America and many others, I wouldn't be surprised if they were for those more serious issues. That said, Rate Your Charge says these numbers seem to be improving. Even though this is a relatively small sample size, you can definitely see that Tesla's reports are a lot more consistent. Overall, I think it's safe to assume Tesla's network will be the most reliable for a long time coming. Next up today, we've talked a bit recently about Tesla's inventory problem. When they have too many cars in inventory, whatever the reason, they need to sell them. They don't have dealerships like most legacy automakers, so it's tough for them to hold a lot of cars on hand that aren't yet selling. That's why when we hear that Tesla's inventory is reaching a new high, it's a big deal. According to these recent reports, the majority of the inventory that Tesla doesn't seem to be selling is the Model X. But we're now seeing Tesla rearranging their pricing to incentivize customers to buy cars in inventory across their whole lineup. They have now done this with a price increase. Recently, we saw Tesla drop all of their prices to recent lows, likely to spur demand and sell their cars. But they have clearly been experimenting with what sells cars the most. Is it simply the price, or do customers want incentives as well? For the Model S and X, they're trying the incentive of free supercharging. These cars saw a $2,500 price increase across all trims, but at the same time, Tesla added three years of free supercharging. Depending on your use, this could be a great incentive that will save you a lot on fuel cost. Now for the Model 3 and Y though, Tesla's most popular cars, we've actually seen another price increase, but this one is different. Across all trims of these cars, Tesla raised the price by $250. So their cheapest car now starts at the odd price of $40,240. The Model Y now starts at $47,000. $7,240, long range at $50,240, and performance at $54,240. While they increased these prices on their order configurator, they did not do so for inventory vehicles. So when you click the View Inventory button to buy a Model Y out of inventory, you'll be taken to their inventory page, which is selling cars for $250 cheaper than if you configure them yourself. Of course, it's a bit hard to compare here because these already include options, but just the fact that their prices end with $990 gives it away. This is very likely a small price increase to incentivize customers to look for an inventory car. If the options are similar enough to what I want, I'll save $250. I wouldn't be surprised if they expand this further in the future, because they might be finding certain configurations of cars, like this one in standard range black and a tow hitch, just aren't the most popular option. So when they make them, it's a bit harder to get it off their hands. At the same time as well, the whole market is in a much different place than the past. Elon Musk himself has been talking about the difficulty associated with getting a car loan in the US right now. We're also finding that in large part due to Tesla's drastic price decreases, customers who would have easily updated their Tesla in the past aren't doing so. Not only is there not much that has changed in these vehicles, but many are underwater on their car loans, causing quite the bill to upgrade to a now much cheaper Tesla. As Tesla scales up production, they're in a much different position than the past. They have lots of cars ready to sell and a changing customer base. This could be a big motivator for them updating the design of the Model 3 soon. Teslas have become super common on the road. I personally know someone who sold theirs and switched to a BMW i4 in large part because they were tired of having a car that everyone has. They mentioned parking at the grocery store and walking out to see four nearly identical Model 3s parked next to theirs. The cool factor of Teslas is definitely changing and this is especially evident here in California. But Ford's CEO, Jim Farley, is warning that this could be a huge problem for Tesla in the future. He says the quote price war that Tesla has started is reminiscent of Henry Ford's strategy when the Model T went to mass production over 100 years ago. The introduction of the conveyor belt to the assembly line allowed Ford to produce a whole lot more cars a whole lot quicker, so Henry started slashing prices to boost sales. This appears to be what we're seeing with Tesla pretty much exactly. As their factories get more efficient, they can make more cars, and they've recently slashed prices to keep up. While this strategy has negatively impacted Tesla's profit margins, Elon defended it at Tesla's last earnings call recently. Quote, we do believe we're laying the groundwork here, and that it's better to ship a large number of cars at a lower margin and subsequently harvest that margin in the future as we perfect autonomy. Farley's warning is that this may not work long term because Tesla isn't thinking about product freshness. He says, quote, the product gets commoditized and then you lose your pricing premium. That's a really dangerous thing. Henry Ford realized he was facing the same issue, but by the time they started offering new colors and a new model, they had already lost the race to Chevrolet. It's easy to draw some comparisons here. The overall look of Tesla's cars has barely changed at 
all since they were each released, while traditional automakers refresh their cars regularly. Tesla has managed to avoid that by constantly introducing new software to improve their vehicles instead. Something that will help though is the introduction of the Cybertruck, which is coming up very soon. The last we heard, the delivery event for that truck will likely take place at the end of Q3 with volume production starting in 2024. It may be a stretch to say this giant truck is going to help boost sales of their other cars though. That said, while Tesla may not agree with Jim Farley here, they do appear to be playing this game. There have been a few leaks of their upcoming Project Highland Model 3, and now we have some great render concepts of what that could bring. This front image of what is believed to be the updated Model 3 was leaked, showing an updated bumper and headlight design. Then I was sent an image of what the rear trunk will look like on the updated Model 3, and I was able to show a sketch of it. Dominic on Twitter took those and made a render of what the updated Model 3 rear could look like. This definitely lines up with that image I was sent, and then All When Art posted this one from a different angle. This updated rear design won't be for everyone and may look quite different than this, but it will help distinguish the Model 3 from previous years and help it stand out as these cars are continuing to become more and more common. Ultimately, it could be something that helps with what appears to be Tesla's growing inventory problem. Price drops help, but so do noticeable product updates. Next up today, Tesla's popularity continues to increase overall, but the Model S and X are facing more issues than their more affordable options. Recently, we reported that the Model S and X were no longer being offered in Australia. All we knew was that prospective buyers were no longer able to place an order, with the only option being to sign up for updates, and that they still hadn't had any deliveries for the refreshed Model S or X. At the same time, they were still being sold in the UK and other right-hand drive markets. Now, some of these markets are also seeing the Model S and X being taken away. In the last couple days, Tesla has also taken the configurator for the Model S and X off of their websites for Thailand, Singapore, and New Zealand, with no explanation as to why. What these markets have in common is that they are all right-hand drive, and in the Asia-Pacific. Currently, it's unclear why these markets specifically have been targeted. Orders are still open in the UK so far. In the US, Tesla seems to be struggling with maintaining demand for the Model X in particular, as the inventory for that vehicle has been rising. While these are left-hand drive Model Xs, that lack of demand for the Model X could be indicative of global trends. If that's true, it would make sense that they would cut back on right-hand drive models first, eliminating the need for special parts to be made and shipping overseas. Another explanation could be that amid a slew of price drops, they just don't want the price to be visible anymore in those markets until it stabilizes. Those markets also have longer delivery timelines since they're being shipped from other countries, so Tesla might just need some time to catch up with deliveries. It's still possible this is just a temporary hold on orders, but we'll have to see how it all develops. At the same time, according to CarMax's 2023 Electric Vehicle Consumer Report, Tesla is officially the most popular used EV brand. CarMax is the largest used car retailer in the United States, and they're reporting a significant increase in consumer interest in in EVs, especially in Teslas. In their 2023 EV consumer report, they say, quote, fast forward to February 2023 and search volume for terms containing electric on CarMax.com have doubled since this time last year. Searches peaked in October around the time the new rules for the US federal EV tax credit were being put into effect. Based on their sales data from February of this year, all of Tesla's cars made the top 10 list for the most popular vehicles bought, with the Model 3 and Y at the top of the list. CarMax includes the average prices of each car and those two hold their value very well. The Model 3's average price is $37,000, just $9,490 under the average new price of $46,490. That's a 79.6% average value retention. The Model Y's average price was $47,807, just $2,516 under the average new price of $50,323. That's an average value retention of 95% for that car, which is definitely incredible for any used car. The Model X had an average value retention that's a little lower than 70.4%, and the Model S had a value retention of about 65%. What these numbers could be telling us is that the Model X and S in particular may be falling out of popularity compared to Tesla's other vehicles. That could also explain why Tesla is pulling them from certain markets. That said, these cars are still in the top 10 most bought electric cars. All in all, it makes sense that Tesla's more affordable vehicles are way more popular, and the fact that their most expensive vehicles make the list is still impressive. Last up today, some updates from other automakers. Lordstown has hit another major roadblock after tons of back and forth for production. They may be on track for 
bankruptcy after Foxconn decided to end their investment agreement. Foxconn was going to help make this car a reality, but then Lordstown had to recall all of their initial trucks and halt production. According to Lordstown, Foxconn shouldn't be able to easily back out of this deal, but it's also clear that Foxconn does want out, so we'll have to see how this all develops. Either way, it's not looking good for the Lordstown Endurance becoming a reality. Over at Ford, they are reopening orders of the Mustang Mach-E, updating its range and lowering its price. The standard range is being upgraded to 250 miles of EPA range for rear-wheel drive and 226 for all-wheel drive. All standard range Mach-E's now include LFP batteries, and that brings additional horsepower on these lower-priced models, along with better charging and range. As for pricing, the standard range models have dropped by $3,000, now starting at $43,000 and beating Tesla's Model Y. The California Route 1 has dropped by $1,000, and the rest of the trims have dropped by $4,000. Now the starting price of the most expensive Mach-E is right at $60,000. One thing worth noting is that currently this car qualifies for half of the EV tax credit at $3,750. That's all the latest Tesla news for today, so in the meantime, if you want to see the six times Teslas were hacked, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.